I want to welcome all of His glory nation from east to west to north to south in our teaching today of Isaiah 6. And as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living Word of God, which is our Savior Christ the Lord. Isaiah 6, this is where the prophet Isaiah is taken up to the third heaven and sees the magnificent throne of God. Um, God uh, shows him his calling and um, he sees the seraphim. And we'll talk about seraphim and cherubim in just a moment. Let's get right into it. Isaiah 6, 1. In the year that King Uzzah died, I saw Jehovah sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. So there's a, a, a temple in the third heaven as well. And his robe filled the temple. Now, there's some question whether this is God the Father or a what, what is called a thanopony, a uh, Old Testament uh, showing of Jesus Christ, because Paul tells us that Jesus Christ is the, the, is the visible of the invisible God. Remember, God the Father has never been seen, but Jesus Christ is the visible of the invisible God, meaning he is not only the Son of God, but also is God in the second head, where God came into the flesh in the form of man so that we could have eternal life with him and through him. So he's seeing this. Uzzah was a king that, uh, remember, got leprosy in 2 Kings 15, 7. Um, and his death came, he uh, tried to take on the priestly duties, uh, and that was forbidden under the law. The kings were supposed to do the king duties, and the priestly duties were separate from the king, and you weren't supposed to intertwine with those. The only one that had an exception was with David when he had the showbread. And Jesus made reference of that, meaning that in the end times, that there are, the new line will be kings and priests forever. Yes, us, the church, the, 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 the saints of the, through, through the blood of Jesus Christ will be kings and priests forever in the line of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek, again, is Melch in the, in the Hebrew means king, king and lord of righteousness. And he will, the, the priestly line will be in the order of Melchizedek, not in the, in the line of the Levites. Verse 2. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two head he covered his face, two he covered his feet, and two he flew. Uh, so there's a difference between seraphim and cherub. Um, those are two different types of angels. Some uh, scholars will tell you that's just a, a, another way of telling you um, the same thing twice. But I, when God is specific... Uh, he means specific. In the book of Yasser, it clearly states that there are two different types of angels. Uh, again, the seraphim were the fiery ones. We're going to see that they had access to the fiery coal that will touch the lips of Isaiah to cleanse him. And we see in cherub, the cherub uh, first are mentioned in uh, Genesis 3.24. And then Ezekiel talks about the four living creatures that had four faces, the man of the lion, the ox, and the eagle. And interesting, the, the cherub... Um, also represent the four tribes of Israel. Um, when they there's twelve tribes and they were bunched up in groups of three, and each group of three from the east, west, north, and south took on a symbol for that particular group of three tribes. Um, one being the ox, one being the man, one being the lion, and one being the eagle. Nothing is a coincidence in God's books, uh, as the rabbis say. Coincidence is not a kosher word. God has everything set up precise. And one cried to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is Jehovah a host. The whole earth is full of his glory, meaning full of his kavod, the literal essence of the Lord. This is just a magnificent verse. This is one of the verses that we have uh, on our website uh, because our, um, uh, our uh, ministry, obviously, is his glory, and God gave us that name, gave that name to my mother years and years ago before we even thought about having a ministry. And uh, just recently, the Lord told me that the, the, uh, his glory, the name, why he gave his name to this ministry to grow and today we have uh, three uh, His Glories in Kenya, one in Liberia, potentially another in Liberia, one in India, and potentially one in Pakistan with the headquarters being here in uh, the United States. So His glory literally will be going all over the world. And he told me it's His true essence. His kavod in the Hebrew means the literal essence of His glory, His Shekinah. It glows, it radiates, it just fills it with His glory. Um, there's no pun in, there is no uh, figure of speech here, holy, 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 meaning the three. Jehovah in, in uh, Hebrew, we learn from Donald Barnhouse in his, uh, his um, 
commentary on the book of Revelation that uh, Yehovah in, Jer- in uh, uh, Hebrew d- means three, and that's why he said holy, holy, holy. Holy representing one of all the Godheads, God the Father, Jesus Christ, and, and the Holy Spirit. So, so Isaiah is witnessing this magnificent thing going on in the, in the, the, the kavod of, of, of the throne of God. This is just magnificent. And the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So it was filled with his glory, just radiant in that, in that unconditional love that you feel when you taste uh, the godly realm like I did when I had my two near-death experiences. You can't even put into words where we're going and how lo- wonderful it is. You're just filled with love and uh, unconditional peace and all your senses are heightened and aware and you just, you just, you just want to praise the most high God for all the things he's done and bringing us home to a paradise. And Isaiah's getting a chance to see this, seeing where his true home is going to be after he fulfills what the will of the Lord is. This is where God is going to tell him what he wants from the prophet. So, so I said, woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. So he's saying, I'm a man, I'm born into sin. Even though I'm a prophet of the Lord, we all fall short of the glory of God. We have all have S-I-N positive in our DNA. And he says, I'm unworthy. And I dwell in the midst of people that are unclean lips. The people of Israel are, 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 are denying your name, Lord. They're hardening their hearts and they're going away to their own gods, their own idols and not being obedient. For my eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts. And good. And the, again, this could be a reference to uh, a, a thanopony. Again, a thanopony is a fancy term for uh, an Old Testament of, of Jesus Christ because we know Christ comes back as the title of the King of Kings and Lord of hosts. Verse 6, Then one of these seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the tongs from the altar. Again, uh, the seraphim have, are the fiery ones. He's taken the, the, the fire of, of a coal from the fiery... Uh, in front of the throne, and he's going to take that to uh, take that to Isaiah. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sins purged. So this was uh, an, uh, uh, showing a way of because of, eight, or because of Isaiah's heart, that he loves the Lord. It wasn't because he went and uh, outwardly had a coals touch his lips. No, this is, was inwardly that God saw the heart of Isaiah, that Isaiah was truly in love with the Lord and gave everything to him. And we're going to see why in a minute how he says, I'll do whatever you want me to do, Lord. Just tell me what it is. I'll do it. And that's what God wants from us, a faithful servant and says, whatever you want, Lord. Now just tell me what you, I'll do it. I'll do it, Lord. Now just tell me what you want done and not complain and do, dwell, do the will of the Lord. So the, so the seraphim purged his lips to, as a sign of washing away of his iniquity. And it was because of his faith Remember, Christ has not died for the, uh, uh, until Christ comes uh, as the Lamb of God. So Isaiah was prior to that. And so the, the covenant was uh, not the law. The covenant wasn't sacrifice. The covenant wasn't uh, outward, outward um, circumcision. The covenant was same as it is through Jesus Christ. Salvation th- through the Lord is faith and love in Jehovah, Elohim, the Father. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, Who shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. This is, what I, I think, just one of the most beautiful things and uh, verses in the entire Bible. Here's Isaiah, full of agape love for the Most High God, filled in his Shekinah glory, his kavod, and how glorious and great our God is in all the depths that he has gone to have, to, to have an agape relationship, a love relationship with us. And Isaiah loved the Lord so much, he says, I will go, Lord. You send me, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Not even knowing what God could tell him to do. Again, the, the, will of a, the, the work of a prophet was not easy. It's not what people wanted to hear. And we're going to see later on that part of the things that God told him to do is wear a loincloth. He was, he was, he was mostly naked for three years to try to get the attention of the people to, to come back to the Lord. I mean, to the prophet, the people, the, the people didn't want to hear a prophet. The prophets were ridiculed. They were uh, attacked by foreign armies. Their own people didn't want to listen to them. 
So being a prophet of the Lord, you really had to be strong in your faith. And you had to trust in the Lord. You had to love the Lord. And you had to fulfill His will no matter what the world would do to you. As we see, every single prophet had a very difficult time. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Elijah, even after taking the Baals, you know, he wanted to die. Ezekiel, you know, his wife died. He couldn't even, uh, even weep over her death. And uh, so on and so forth. The, the life of a prophet was, is, was for the Lord and the world was against him. And he said, go and tell this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. And he's saying that you keep on hearing, uh, but you don't understand. You don't understand my word. You don't understand who I am. I am that I am and all I ask from my people who are called by my name to love me with all your heart, your soul, and your might and be obedient to my word. They weren't. They were too wrapped up in the world. And the Lord's going to have to take them out into captivity. And that's why Babylon, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, takes them out into captivity for exactly 70 years, we know, through the prophet Jeremiah. Why? Because it was 490 years that they did not uh, listen to God in the Shemitah. And 70 times 7 is 490, so that is the punishment, is 7 times so that's why it was 70 years to the day that they were in captivity. It was a punishment because they did not obey the Lord. There's repercussions when we do not obey. And he does it for love. That There will be a remnant that will come back. And he's going to talk about a remnant. And it's, uh, the remnant is something I've mentioned many times and uh, that I believe very strongly. The remnant means 10, 10%, first fruit, a tithe. And I believe that's the number that will be when God sends uh, Jesus Christ back to rapture or harpazo the church. It will be a remnant, only about 10%, probably precisely 10% of those who truly love him and are waiting for his return will be raptured. The rest will have to go in the tribulation. Make the heart of the people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes and let them see, uh, see with their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. See, they understand with their heart. The only way to get to know the Lord is to understand with your heart, not your eyes, not your ears, not the world. Faith is, is believing in, in the things that we can't see and trusting God because we love him so much that we know his word is truth and he will always fulfill his word. He always fulfills his word. We have a God that is loyal. We have a God that loves us with every ounce. And all he wants is us to give up our heart and open our heart to him and learn from him and then get into his word and get to know him and then be obedient and do his will. That's what he's saying. Then I said, Lord, how long? Jehovah, how long? How long do I have to do to this, this, this hard-necked people? And the Lord answered him and said, until the cities are laid waste without inhabitant, the houses were out without man. The land is utterly desolate, prophesizing what is going to happen to the nation of Israel because of disobedience going into captivity. Again, the punishment and the law was seven times. And that's why they were, uh, they were disobedient. It would be seven times 70. Um, so that was 70 Shemitahs that they did not fulfill. A uh, total of 490 years. So the number was 70, 70 times seven. That's why it came to be precise. And uh, the houses are without man, and the land is utterly desolate. And that's exactly what transpired. The Lord has removed men far away. He took them off into captivity. And, the, and forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. Verse 13, and we close, and here it is. But yet a tenth will be in it. A tenth means the remnant. There's always a remnant of the Lord. The remnant of the Lord that stays strong to his will and to his name and does not deny him, and is obedient to him. And it's, it's my conjecture that that will be the number that gets harpazoed. There will be a tenth, a tithe, a first fruit that will be spared. And that is the church of Philadelphia that did not deny his name, stood strong fast, had the key of David, and, and what God said was coming through Jesus Christ in the church of Philadelphia in the book of Revelation was the day of Jacob's trouble, talking about no time that's ever had been before. And he says, I got a key for you to open up the door. And that door is the wedding ceremony, or the wedding supper. And that, <coughs> excuse me, well, that is the only church that was able to escape 
They escaped the, tri the times of Jacob's trouble. And again, I believe that is what God is referring to, a tenth, a tithe. That, that, those are the 10% of all that truly love him. There will be Christians that will have to go through the tribulation. They are saved, but they didn't love him and anxiously await his return. They did not, uh, they did not uh, stay steadfast. They did not uh, deny his, uh, stay strong in his word. They got politi politically correct and they went through the motions and had the attitude, well, you know, Christ will come when he comes. Well, that's not love. Christ will come when he comes. That's, that's not the way to look at it. We anxiously await his return because we love him so much. And that's why he says in the book of Revelation, there's a blessing that those who read this book and are obedient to it. He wants us to know the future things that are happening. That's why God is telling Isaiah things are going to happen before they happen, including the Messiah. And when we get into Isaiah 9, they're just mind-boggling of how he's talking about the Christ and how God is three in one. And when we get in that, we'll get into that a little bit deeper. And we'll return and be for consuming a terabith tree or as an oak whose stump remains when it's cut down. So he's saying he's going to cut down. He's going to cut it down. So the holy seed shall be its stump. And there is a holy seed that comes out of the stump. And that stump is the stump of, 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 of Jesse, of David. And there will be spring out the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who will create a new covenant. As Jeremiah 31, 31 says, I created a new covenant for them that is better than the old and is through God the Father who gave up his only begotten son, the Messiah. And taking it a step further, the God entered into this human realm and felt sin in this world and took it all to the cross because he's perfect for us. All our sins, past, present, and future. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and that is our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray that Isaiah 6 has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you today and always. God bless.